Tales from the Trenches, stories forged in the fires of experience. This episode provided to you by Norman Van Johnson from the Atlanta Technical College. Learn more about Atlanta Technical College at atlantatech.org. All right, everyone, thank you for joining. Did you know the ESCO HVAC podcast? So I am hanging out with Norman Johnson, one of the top 25 educators. How are you doing, sir? I am doing well. Thank you, Brad. And how about yourself? Man, I'm telling you what, I wish I would hit the record button like 20 minutes ago when we first started talking. Like, So this is the first time Norman and I have actually had a chance to just sit and hang out, you know, otherwise like email and message you back and forth. And man, I tell you what, I, uh, man, I like you. <laughs> Thank like, you. I like you too. <laughs> man, that's like your your stories is just like so so impactful. It, it's so much what I believe in, and you know th- a lot of this stems from you know from the the True Tech Tools. Kind of, I say competition, but like recommendations, right? You know, they're looking for people to nominate the, the top educators of the industry, and you of course were one of the top twenty five educators. And I and we asked everyone to send in a video of uh you know of you just kind of just saying hey hi hi to the industry man you're just like knock the socks out of everyone and i was like man that guy's got it going on he's got kids that just love what he's doing i mean he and so then when you and i sit and talk and then we're like okay like right you've got the passion like you have like legit got the passion that that i i i resonate with i mean for me it, there's so much to what this industry has to offer, but a lot of times we don't always see what those things are. Sometimes it takes a little, a little help. And like, so one of the things that you talk about is like the kind of the, the name of this one is like figuring out your HVAC why, right? Yeah. <laughs> so so let's back up and we gotta we gotta tell the world about this a little bit. So let's just kind of set the stage of like like what sparked you to get to this point of your community. Cause that, that's really what it comes down to is like helping people in your community find that why in themselves. And then just think about it for a little bit, search on it. When I start helping people, as far as just with my, just air conditioning abilities. And, and, and like I tell my students today, I say, you know, there's no, t- there's no difference between me and you. I was not like a air conditioning savant or anything. Right. You know, it's not like I just do this. They were like, oh, you know this stuff and it's easy. It comes easy for you. I was like, no, no, it's, that's not that's not how it happens. The only difference between me and you is exposure. You know, I've been exposed to it more times than you. The only way the only way a, a, a home run hitter can get a, a good average is, is getting up to the plate. Right. You know, oh, you, you don't get you don't your average doesn't change if you don't make the swings, <laughs> you know, so as long if you keep doing this, it's like a a, a, a slot machine. You, you're investing in it and it's eventually going to pay off. I mean, I tell people with all kinds of problems, you know, from backgrounds to, you know, they have problems learning in school, you know, like they, 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 they don't feel like that they can do anything. If you give it an opportunity, you know, it's going to it's going to happen because this the, the, the hardest part about this industry is the people that you might have to come into contact with. True. The air conditioning and heating systems, they're going to be the same. They're going to be fundamentally the same. So if you understand the fundamentals, you understand the equipment, you know, so. When I got into that and, and, and was able to express that to people and 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 even before I started teaching at a traditional school, because I was, I, I found myself teaching people on my job sites. And yeah. granted, like I said, I was only, I started doing air conditioning when I was 18, 18 years old. I enrolled at Atlanta, Atlanta Area Tech. That's what it was called back then, Atlanta Area Tech in 1983 and finished in 85. And when I finished in 85, you know, I went right out into the field. And after after a summer and a winter, I felt comfortable because I pretty much looked at all the troubleshooting options for a heating and air conditioning system because I had done it all season. And I seen so many guys doing things wrong or having issues with stuff where they really shouldn't have had issues. So I would say, look, this is how you would do it. Now, granted, I went back to the same company that I was the I was a leasing consultant for when I was 17 years old. So 
you can imagine how people look. So some people were good about it. They were like, yeah, he, this guy, he knows something. But then those other guys who had been there 10 years, they were like, wait a minute now. The leasing consultant, y'all are going to listen to him? He just got out of school. <laughs> you know? and, 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 and it came with a lot of backlash. So where I, in the beginning where I thought that I should have had like, where I should have been like really happy, be, I, 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 I really seen the backlash more. You know, people were like, oh, you know, he's new out of school. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Blah, 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 blah. You know, so it was a different types of thing. So now I'm like, wait a minute. I think I'm doing this right. I'm teaching these people, but some people aren't happy with my existence and helping. But the ones who were happy about, because I was taking groundsmen and making them into technicians. I got... I got promoted to a supervisor and all the people on the job quit because they were like, wait a minute. I we could have I should have been supervisor before him. Been here 10 years. Right, exactly. So they quit. And we used to back then hiring was a thing. You know, you put in the Sunday paper and wait, you know, or you try to hire from different properties that your company owns. And I literally had to go out and hire two of my groundsmen. They were about my age back then. I think at that time I was like 23 years old. They were one of them was older than me. I think he was 26 and he was a groundsman. And the other one was like 18, you know, for a summer job. And he was a groundsman. But they were being groundsmen at other properties. So since I couldn't hire anybody, since I couldn't find anybody, I went and asked them did they want to become technicians and that I would help them get to that level. And once the owner saw me train them to be technicians, next thing you know, I turned into a pipeline of training and with no extra money, <laughs> you know, they would take the people away from me who I would train and send them somewhere else and then send me some more people who didn't know what they were doing. I was like, wait, hold on. I don't think wait a this, minute. this is supposed to be working. But I was kind of like thrilled with it because they were giving me the opportunity to express myself in training and then you know apartments kind of wore me out and i was like it's time for me to move on you know i was like you know i've i've reached supervisor i've only been doing this three or four years you know and i'm the supervisor outside of being a regional supervisor you know my my I, there was nothing but lateral movement for me so i was like um, i can't end my career here because i'm a progressive person yeah, i like yeah. doing stuff and like seeing it grow and grow and grow and grow so i mean at that point at the end of the apartments you know I, like I, said, I, I went into a contracting and subcontracting you know I, I had my own business and since i had my license that i got when i was uh 20 i think 22 I was like 22 years old, got my warm air license, which is a big deal in Georgia. You know, I got my warm air license and I was like, I, I need to apply this to, you know, business. And, you know, I, I like business, you know, but it, it, it has other things that aren't desirable. I don't like the paperwork. I don't even like the paperwork at school, <laughs> you know, <laughs> into, into the semester work and things like that. But I don't like paperwork. So business was, you know, and wearing that, wearing all the hats. It wasn't it wasn't as fun as as as, as just doing it, you know, but it, had, it you know, I was making money, you know, and that was the main thing. Me and, me and my wife, we, we like I said, we got we got married at a young age. I was 24. She was 20. You know, we were. And she was in school, you know, working on her degrees at Georgia State. And um, and she just encouraged me to like just to keep pushing on and trying different, you know, trying, trying different things. And my mother and father, they were in, you know, my father, you know, he was an entertainer. And like I said, he didn't do much of anything outside of entertainment. And he was like fascinated. You know, he was like, oh, Red, you know how to fix that. Right. <laughs> you know, how you doing that? You Work know, your own bicycle, your own vehicle. <laughs> like, wait, where'd you get this from? Exactly. So he's always known that I like fixing on things, even though me and him were music compadres. You know, yeah. anytime he was working on something in the studio and he would come home, you know, he would be like, hey, you need to listen to this. And he was just as interested 
you know, as my air conditioning stuff. You know, he would ask me about, you know, even though he didn't know anything about it. Right. You know, him and my mother would ask me about, you know, what's going on in air conditioning? Oh, it's a hot summer. You're doing really good this summer, right? You know, and they would see me all grimy sometimes and crawl. Where you been? Up under a house. (laughs) That's what it is. (laughs) What was the reason you were in there? (laughs) Right. So that was like from going from the the why from just getting into um, HVAC, you know, it, it really started changing after I got into the industry. You know, then I started looking for just different things that wasn't the normal thing. You know, I wanted to do something different. And when I got the first opportunity to teach um, at Interactive Learning Systems before I before I went to Atlanta Tech, um, it was just interesting to be able to have a platform, a, a, a legitimate platform where you did your lesson plans. And you got a chance to do your stand up, you know, here it goes, you know, is this thing on? Right. <laughs> you know, hello? Anybody out there? <laughs> you know, I got a chance to, to stand up in front of an audience, you know, and talk and see to see if what I was saying would resonate with a whole group of people who didn't know any, most of them didn't know anything about air conditioning. You know, so I'm taking them from the fundamentals of refrigeration to the fundamentals of electricity and boom, they're getting jobs. And I'm like, wow, this is I, I, I love that part. I love the part of and one of my students came in today and was like, hey, Johnson, I'm, he's, he's still in school, but he got hired. You know, he, he got hired. He's like, I'm going to switch to nights. You know, I'm working for an air conditioning company. Started me off with what I wanted, you know. I'm gonna go out there and work it for this, you know, for this summer. I was like, that's fine and good. I'm proud of you. Just make sure you finish school. Yeah, you know, because it'll turn into a rat race real fast, and you want to finish your goals. And your goal was to finish was to finish school so that you can get that certificate. So that if, if HR comes up and says that you need to be a a graduate from a accredited technical school, you won't have to come back and see me again, you know, 10 years later, you know? So that's the only thing that I, you know, that, that, I, that I preach to him when they're out there looking for jobs when they're in school. And he's only in second semester. He still has a whole nother semester to go. And I mean, that's my biggest why. My biggest why is I love hearing that success story. I mean, just the other, what last year, my son who lived, you know, my, I got two, 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 two sons, my youngest son, you know, he, he, he had some different th- opinions of what he wanted to do in life. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, that's fine. You know, because my wife tells me I have to <laughs> let them pick because she was like, you're a poster child for <laughs> for technical <laughs> education. <laughs> you know, you had the opportunity to go to college and, you know, and, 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 but I look at her family, you know, they're all they're all degreed down. You know, like I said, her brother is a tenured professor, at one of the top business schools in America, maybe even the world. You know, and he teaches also at Harvard. And my wife has two master's degree. And my father in law was an economics major. And my mother in law, she went to college. Her, their whole family was just college. So. My wife was teaching at a college, and so my kids could go there for free. So I was like, no, no, you're going to college. (laughs) (laughs) But my youngest son, and he played in the band and everything. I was like, you're going to get to see the whole world. You know, you're going to go to Morehouse and be a a maroon tiger. Your brother's over at Morehouse. He's almost finished, and you're going to be in the marching band. And he was like, I don't want to go. I was like, what? You know, I'm living through you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> going to all these different countries in the all band. Right. And you're talking about you don't right. want to go. Let me live it for a couple of years. Kid, this is free. You don't have to put <laughs> this is free. Yes, I'm sit back and watch you. <laughs> exactly. Yes, you're going or maybe. And, not. and if not, why? Now, granted, exactly. Why? Granted. Now, before he wanted at first, he wanted to be a chef mm-hmm. and Granted, I have pictures of him cooking since he was nine years old. So I was like, ah, you know, I'm going to let him be a chef. So he enrolled in the school here with me for culinary arts. Mm-hmm. 
went through the pro got halfway through the program, got a job cooking, and realized he and still enjoyed cooking, but not so much for other people. Sure. I get that. You know, <laughs> and standing <laughs> on your feet. Yes, chef, no yeah. chef. Yeah. And yeah. Judge Ramsey I mean now uh, yeah. Chef Ramsey attacking you and knocking your <laughs> onions all over the place. Nope. <laughs> like, well, this may be not what I want to do. So I encouraged him during the pandemic just to start riding with me on yeah, calls. Like Right, because we were essential workers. Mm, so I was able to go out on calls even when we weren't in school. Yep. So he did that. And when I started going back to school part time, I was like, instead of me having to come home and get you, I want you to come to school with me. And he started coming to school. He said, this is how you guys do class in here. You know, this is interesting. And he took it. And without any help from me, He's working in an HVAC field now, working as an HVAC uh -huh. technician at a swank <laughs> complex downtown. And he's he's like five or six months in and he loves it to where my oldest son, who's graduate from a, a esteemed HBCU college. He's talking about coming here in the fall to take air conditioning just because of what he's seen his brother do when he goes out. And, oh, they would always go out and work with me. Right, you know, right. but they never looked at it as a job, you know, but now, and like I said, they're, they're like my, they're like my biggest, my biggest, um, um, just my youngest son, just, I mean, to have your son go through your, your program, no, you no. know, and the students in the beginning didn't even know he was my son because I didn't want to make it feel that way. I didn't want to make it feel like, you know, this is my son because then everybody, oh, yeah, of course he's going to do good. You know, teacher's kid, coach's kid, you know. <laughs> so I didn't really let on. But after a while, they found out that he was my son. And, you know, he went through the, went through the same. And I would always tell them, even though when my son said, well, I want to do air conditioning, I said, you have to go to school. I want you to I don't want to train you on a job because that's not what I'm doing on a job. I'm trying to get finished. I want to, you have to go to school and go through the process like everybody else. And he did, you know, and that's just one of thousands of thousands of stories that, that I, um, that I have, you know, of, of people's success. You know, I, 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 I've taught people from all over the world, you know, from, you know, the, Vietnamese students, Russian students, German students, French students, students from Africa. And I'm talking about when I say that, I'm not talking about they're here, they were, you know, in these countries and then came. They're literally, this is their first interaction with what's going on in the state of Georgia, you right, know, right. And, and they're, and they're here. Generation. Right. And then I, I, I see them. Uh, we went to one time, we went to a little street in, in Atlanta called Buford Highway, where a lot of the, the, the different foods are. I've been there. We, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, were there, we were there eating That's some Vietnamese. Right there. Yes. We were in there eating some Vietnamese food, and me and my wife, because we're real foodies, you know, mm -hmm. we're down there eating food, and this guy comes running out the, the back, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, and he was in the back fixing his uncle's. He his name was Tron Tron Duck or something something like that. He mm -hmm. he was in the back fixing his uncle's freezer. Nice and. Next thing I know, the whole family's around me and my wife's table. You know, he was like, "This, this is my daughter. This is paid for everything." You know, and was just they were all like bowing, and you know, <laughs> I was like, "This is a little overwhelming," <laughs> you know. But he was he had his own. Took me outside. Had his own van now. You know, doing his own thing, and that's that's the that's the thing that's the thing of it for me. You know, it's, it's definitely. It's definitely the students. I can't say that the school kept me here, yeah. you know, but the students, you know, you know, you always have little growing pains with your, you know, faculty, staff and stuff like that. And sometimes it might rub you the wrong way, but it's all a, for, for me. It's all about the students. And it, I mean, I've had students. I had one student who who was incarcerated, you know, got out, had a bad outlook on life. Some days he would be attached. Some days he wouldn't. And I asked him, you know, I was like, what's going on with you? He was like, oh, nobody's going to hire me. I'm a felon. I said, let's deal with that when you get to the end of the road. Let's do good in school. And then we'll figure it out once you finish. And he figured it out. I helped him get a job. 
on everything. This man runs his own business now. That's the beauty of it. It's not. That's the, that's the beauty of it to see somebody who's totally down on themselves, and then they don't have a lot of student debt. You know, they don't have. You know, they don't have, they don't have to go back and say, "Well, I owe forty thousand dollars." You know, I got to start paying that back before I can even say I'm making any money. You know, these the, just their ability to come to a technical training. And like I said, I see, I see, especially on LinkedIn, I see a couple of guys who do like some stuff with some middle schoolers, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, and I wish I remembered his name, but I'm like, this guy, this is unbelievable. I mean, he got him on ladders with torches. <laughs> you know, I'm like, wow, in middle school, you know, and I'm like, this is interesting. And now to see all these posts about comparing technical training with you know, a four year degree and just how it stacks up. It's like, this is eye opening. This should be eye opening for people, you know, mm -hmm. where I, when my counselor didn't even want me to go to technical school, you know, because, yo, you can do better than that. I'm like, wow. I mean, I didn't think of it that much then as a, only it was only motivated. I'm, I'm very competitive. And when she was saying it wasn't going to work, I was like, yes, it is. Now, granted, sometimes in my life, I was like, OK, she got me, <laughs> you know, but that's with any job, you know, with any job you have to, there's, there's levels to it, you know. So it, it was just important, you know, for me, you know, for my why. And, and any time that I think about it, you know, I, I can think about different times in my life, you know, and that why might equal something differently. You know, but when you bring in students, you know, their whys are pretty much there. I want to be able to do something to so I can support my family, so I can contribute, so I can contribute, you know, to the bills. You know, and, it's, it, and if you have, you know, if, if that's all that you're looking for, that's fine. But there's more to it than that. Once you put once you put yourself into it, once you put yourself into it, it kind of guides you to where you want to go. I used to always think everybody needed to be a, a licensed contractor. I would always tell all my students, you know, that's that's our that's our, you know, that's our PhD. You know, you get that that's our that's the top level. You, I want all of y'all to get it. But I've had some students get into certain places and say, "Johnson, you know I'm happy right here. You know, I'm, I'm right now I'm really content." You know, and if you're happy, then I'm happy for you, mm -hmm. you know, but my goal is for you to reach whatever goal you had in your mind when you came to the school. If it changes, that's one thing I would, I would like to assist you in that, but it's very important for me to try to push you, you know, to your, you know, to whatever your goal was. I think that's the important part of all of it is to look at that, that why, that HVAC why, why are you here? Start to start the conversation. What is your interest? Because everything that you have an interest in is probably attainable in this industry. You it want is. to be appreciated. You want to perform. You want to sell. You want to make lots of money. You want to make a little bit of money and be comfortable. You want to travel. There's so many different aspects of our industry that people don't recognize. And I think you've just, you've hit it on the nail. It's a matter of asking the why, right? Why, why is it right? My wife kind of reminded me about you know, she was like, ah, oh, Bex did the, the podcast. They're looking for people. I was like, oh, I want to do that. So I signed up. I mean, you know, I, you know, she was like, why don't you just call me? I said, no, I'm going to sign up like everybody else. <laughs> you know, if he sees it, you know, it'll go through. You know, that'll be cool. You know, if, if, if they think it's cool, you know, and, and gave me a call right back. I was like, oh, man. So something else is working again. <laughs> right, right. You know, and that's. That's another one of my whys. I like being progressive, you know, I, and, and I like using, you know, especially when, H, like I said, I can't say enough about the HVAC Excellent, you know, convention and the motivation and just what, what spaces put me in right now. Because at first I was like, you know, been doing this 30 years, just going to kind of coast around for a while here but seeing so many other people doing and 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 other people noticing things that I do and just 
different from Facebook or Instagram, it's it's real. It's it's a real good thing to like watch people progress. Yeah, I absolutely love it. All right, Norman Johnson, I sure appreciate you hanging out with me today, and I, I look forward to uh, you and I getting to hang out sometime. Yeah, if, 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 if you're in uh, Indiana, right? Yeah. I'm in Georgia. If I ever make it to Indiana, or if you ever make it to Georgia, or, Likewise. huh? Likewise. Yeah, we, we, I get to yeah, Georgia, I'll be looking you up. Yeah, look me up. You know, I take you around, show you some of the HVAC stuff here, good places to eat and good things to do. All right, man, I appreciate and your time. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed it.